Let's talk about the budget. I'm Nate, I'm the Fit Future MD. Check out answersale.com. Pick you up a cool inspirational t-shirt today. Use code FITFUTUREMD for 20% off if you're interested. So, if you're watching this, hopefully you are have decided to go on a financial independence journey yourself, right? Basically where you build up enough assets to cover your expenses so that you do not have to work anymore if you choose not to, right? <clears throat> That's the journey I'm on. So um, now, that being said, most of the financial books that you see out there, most of the financial courses you see out there, they'll start talking about a budget, right? Um, from Dave Ramsey to whoever else you might follow, they're always going to say budget, budget, budget. Uh, sit down and, <clears throat> you know, comb through your budget, figure out, you know, what expenses you can cut and all that kind of stuff, right? So just like in my fitness journey, right? I want to find what's called a happy medium, right? So, so a place where, you know, I can be on a journey and it just be automatic. It just be easy right um to continue the journey right you're not gonna be like so emaciated with let's just say from fitness right so you're not gonna be so emaciated with food that for 12 weeks that you all of a sudden go crazy on food and you gain the whole 30 pounds back again right like that's the you want something that's consistently doing the same thing right so for me, I don't do a line item budget, okay? Now, people are gonna be scratching their head <laughs> and uh, saying, well, why wouldn't you do a line item budget, you know, if you're trying to be financially independent, if you're trying to maximize the amount of money that you invest every month, right? <clears throat> well, basically, what I've done is I've done the math to um, figure out how much I need to invest every month to um, get to a certain point by a certain time, right? As far as asset allocation, right? To cover my expenses so that I can be financially independent. Now, that being said, so I make that, whatever that amount is for you, so say it's 500 bucks a month, 1,000 bucks a month, um, 10,000 bucks a month, you know, whatever your, your case may be, you know, you're going to make that come out of your money that you make automatically, right? <clears throat> so say you're going to be investing a hundred bucks a month into, for instance, I uh, started a brokerage account for my daughter who was just born in May and a hundred dollars a month is going into her brokerage account from the time she was born. You know, by the time she's 18, she'll be a millionaire, Right. And based on the hundred dollars a month into a brokerage account. Now, that being said, <clears throat> that money automatically comes out of my brokerage account from the money that I make every month in my brokerage account, automatically into her brokerage account, right? So number one, I never actually had to put the mo my money, it's all money that's been made by my money into her brokerage account. And number two, it's automatic, right? I'm not having to go physically move the money every month to make that happen, right? And so the same thing is going to be happening with your budget, right? So for example, you got a two person income, right? Y'all are making 50 grand each, right? <clears throat> average, sal average salary in the U.S. is higher than that now, but which is crazy to think about, but, um, you know, let's just do that math, right? So average salary, 50 grand each. So that's a hundred grand per household salary, right? Now, say a normal investor for 30 years would do 15% automatic into a brokerage account or into retirement accounts, whatever you want to say. You're going to automatically go, okay, 
15,000 out, right? And you're gonna divide that into how many paychecks you have. So if you have 26 paychecks, you divide it out, right? So say you end up with you know, 4,000 take home pay between the two of you and you know, you're going to, you're going to figure out that $1,200 of that is going to have to automatically be taken out and put into your brokerage account or put into your IRA, Roth IRA, 401k, whatever it is, but it's going to automatically come out. <clears throat> so then that means that, you know, you're left with $2,800 to spend and that's your budget. That's, we're not going to go over that amount, whatever, you know, so some bill comes in that was unexpected, blah, 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 and it's over the $2,800. Guess what? We ain't paying it. Or we're going to call and say, hey, we can pay it next month or we can pay it, you know, whatever. Right. Um, also, you're going to uh, foresee future expenses. Right. So every year you got the flood insurance comes out right extra right i think it's like 500 extra dollars every you know once a year twice a year you got car insurance that comes out 600 bucks right <clears throat> so but i'm not going to sit there and go line item by line item and say okay well you went and got too many t's this month no no you can't go get one more t right or i'm not going to sit there and say <clears throat> um you know Hey, we went and, um, I don't know, where would we go? You went and had pizza too much this month or, um, anything like that. I'm just going to say, Hey, you know, this is how much money we have to spend. And once we get there, all spending stops, right? And some months you might be like, Oh crap, we got there really, really fast. And then some months are like, oh, we didn't even get there, right? And when you didn't even get there, all that extra money, right into the brokerage account, right? <clears throat> so that's great too. But that's how I and my, me and my wife decided to do a budget, right? We're not sitting there every month and saying, okay, you spent too much money on diapers this month or, um, you know, why, are, why is our water bill so high or, um, you know, you, you don't deserve to be sitting in uh, 70 degree air conditioning, you know, sitting at a comfortable level because the electric bill is too high. Like, no, we're not doing any of that crap. Right. Like, and you know that all that stuff might make you get to your fire number faster or might get you to your asset allocation faster, but it's also how you like your perceived perception of life, right? Like you're, your quality of life still matters, right? Even if you're trying to get to a, a certain amount, right? You'd rather get to that amount a year later or two years later and still have a good quality of life because you're not guaranteed tomorrow, right? Today could be your last day on earth and you should at least enjoy every day of your life. It shouldn't be you have to suffer to get to your fire number because you don't, right? Now, that being this being the case right so say you start doing this math and you say oh well there's no way i can put that amount away every month then you have to supplement your income right you have to increase your income to get to that amount right so that's when you start doing you know doordash or working an extra job or you know whatever it is you know, so when I came to, when we first came down here to the beach, I was working three jobs, right? <clears throat> I was a CNA, I worked for the city, and I scooped ice cream on the beach at a beach shop, right? So I was working, working, working to get there, right? And that was honestly, at that time, that was to barely make ends meet, right? So, you know, keep that in mind. You know, at the end of the day, if you're sitting there and saying, okay, well, I don't have enough money. We're not making enough money to get there. You have to find a way, right? Um, it's what's important to you. Is it important for you to financially be free 
by the end of this journey, right? Is that important to you? And if it's not, then you won't, then you won't do anything to get there. But for us, we want to make everything automatic, right? So my wife doesn't have to sit there and worry about, oh, what we're investing in, you know, uh, does the money, where's the money coming from? Can I swipe the credit card, you know, at the store to get groceries? You know, can I buy gas today? Like, we don't have to worry about any of that, right? Um, it's automatic for us. Yeah, our budget is automatic, right? <clears throat> And honestly, we, you know, 90, nine out of the 12 months, we don't even get anywhere close to the budget, right? Nowhere close. And that's just because we're frugal people in general, right? I open my own clothing brand, right? So all the clothes I wear are my own clothes. They're, you know, I'm not purchasing them at retail value. Um, I'm purchasing them at wholesale value. Um, and so automatically that helps out the budget right like um but for for instance you know uh we were gifted a lot of diapers uh for at our baby shower um but we had no idea that our baby would stay under 10 pounds for so long right so our baby's still in newborn diapers so we ran out of newborn diapers a lot sooner than we thought we, you know, a lot, you know, we thought we were going to, oh, you could go just go into the ones, go into the twos, all the diapers that we had, you know, been given. Well, it turned out not to be the case. So now we're having to buy diapers, right? But that's not going to change anything about, about our budget, right? Our budget's still going to be, hey, you know, you got this amount to spend. And when you get to that amount, that's it. You cut it off, right? We're not going out. We're not doing nothing. We'll sit at the house and watch Netflix, right? So this is how I do a budget, um, you know, and it's just math. You don't have to go line by line every month and check out what you're spending. Um, it's obviously good to look at the credit card statement because we put everything on a credit card. Even our mortgage is on a credit card and um, we get the points and all that kind of stuff. You get that back um, and then you can take your family vacation every year using points or using cash back, um, which is wonderful. But, you know, that's not what this video is about, but yeah, so then, you know, I at least look through the credit card and say, make sure there's no like fraudulent spending or anything like that up there. Like, but you're not sitting there and saying, oh, you know, my wife got an extra, you know, uh, tea this month, you know, what was she doing? Like, you know, you're not sitting there doing that or living that kind of life, right? you're living your life, you're in the moment, you're enjoying your day, you know, and that's the way it should be, right? And that's the way we choose to live. And we're still gonna hit our fire number by the time we're 40 years old. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, thank you for following along with this journey. Hopefully this helps you guys. Like if you're stressing out about this budget thing, like, hey, let's just do some math, make a minimum, if you're not making enough money, you got to go make some more money. Simple as that. I'm Nate. I'm the Fifth Future MD. Shop at InstaSale.com. Pick you up a cool t-shirt today. The Marlin t-shirt is still out. Um, I got a cool uh, t-shirt idea coming. Um, you know, I don't know if y'all like it or not, but, you know, and it's not really as uh, motivational as more as uh, funny this time. But um, that one's coming. So hopefully you're looking forward to that. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.